Not every good Marvel movie is in the MCU. Welcome to my channel, KC, that's me, Kerry Chug, the Sledge Storyteller, here to talk about the wonderful world of storytelling and open up discussions about how we can tell the best stories we can. Through movies and the example of storytelling that they may offer for good or for bad. And I'm still focusing using the, the some examples of good movies, such as the case of X-Men. Uh, came out in 2000. It was considered to be, by many, the salvation of superhero movies because uh, there was some uncertainty as to whether or not they could work after the failure of Batman and Robin in 1997. So let's talk about it. So I don't like ending on the negative, so I'm gonna just gonna start. I, you know, I wanted this to feel like overall positive review, and I feel like I put a damper on that if I talk about the bad stuff toward the end. But anyway, I at times it feels like there are pacing issues, like some certain things are missing, but I have an understanding of what actually was missing. They, you know, the filmmakers, they wanted to implement the X-Men's famous danger room where, you know, they're trained, they're put into those situations where they have to use their powers to get out of the danger in that danger room. And, you know, that was to serve as good development, as a way to help us understand what they can do. But, uh, you know, there was a budget shortfall that kept them from doing it. So, you know, it, and I think that forced them to compromise the movie, but you know, we deal with that. The, it felt like things were rushed a little bit. I I know we're supposed to feel some vulnerability with Wolverine, and you know where Professor X, uh, you know, strikes a nerve where you know we have, okay, he's 15 years. Uh, he'd been confused and everything like that. It, it felt like he stopped too abruptly that that worked too well. I'm not saying that he's not without vulnerability, but I think that they could have taken a more subtle, more, you know, not immediate uh, hit on that. But again, what we're gonna talk about here makes it overall a good story. You know, I remember as this movie was getting put together the announcement of Patrick Stewart to play Professor X, that was like a fan cast dream come true. You know, he was part of pop culture as, you know, captain uh, in Star Trek Next Generation. So it helped that he was bald, but uh, he was also one who played uh, the kind of person who was level-headed, who was uh, the type uh, who would always want to take the the wise approach to things rather than the aggressive approach to things, which is so much of what Professor X is about in the comics. You know, Stan Lee based him on Martin Luther King as one who was using pacifism to uh, to find solution and to avoid angering people deliberately, but more like wanting to you know show his true self as somebody who's compassionate, uh, who's a voice of reason to help resolve and find harmony. So Patrick Stewart, he does play that. I, I do love uh, how we see that. I mean, it shows range because in real life, Patrick Stewart, he's very flamboyant. He loves to joke around. So we don't see that here, but you know, he's very convincing as that type who you know shows that wisdom and finding a resolution in such a non-violent way and using violence to uh, try to get around the issue rather than go straight through it so you know this goes beyond just talking about Ian McKellen playing the role we, we'll get into that but you know little boy I I don't know his name and I I guess I'm too lazy to take time out to, to look him up and give you the name. But, you know, that little boy actor at the beginning of the movie has one, uh, I'm gonna, says Poland, so that must mean Auschwitz, the, that Nazi camp, and 
being pulled into there and dealing with the marginalization of whatever that was, presumably Jewish. And, you know, there his powers are manifest and no doubt he would use them because of his desperation to not have to experience those horrors. So that makes it so easy for this to become a sympathetic villain and it's well played out. Then we get Ian McKellen playing Magneto and we know that in real life he's part of the marginalized part of society is being gay. Uh, no doubt was a big reason why he uh, took this role to give that message of acceptance in this movie. It's well played out as one who's just plain sick of it. We know that Stan Lee uh, did base Magneto on Malcolm X. Now, during this time as um, the X-Men were developed as a comic, you know, that was Malcolm X attitude and fairness. He did come around to be a little bit more Martin, King, Martin Luther King-like. You know, you can look that up, learn more about it. I recommend it. You know, here we see him behave like Malcolm X during his times of fighting back. And, you know, we know in society, if people are pushed too much, some of them are going to fight back that way. And, you know, we sympathize, but we know that, you know, this is a person who has to be taken down. And you have to love that in the end, we know that Professor X is not giving up on trying to get him to be think more in a way that we can find a peaceful solution rather than you know, a violent solution. But I love the authority that is conveyed uh, by Magneto. I mean, he needs some help from a special effects crew, as I said before, with Iron Man. Like you see him walk up, uh, walk across that big abyss, and you know, using his magnetic powers to create a you know metal plate path. I mean, he just walks as if you know he has perfect control of that. He can control guns. I mean, you know, bullets to the point where you know that cop. The, the bullet's right here, just spinning, and you know he can keep it from uh, running into him and causing the damage to his head. I mean, here's a guy that's so intimidating because of how much of a handle he has on this power. So you know, he's sympathetic, and you know he's a strong character and an intimidating character. So beautifully played, and you know brilliantly played by Ian McKellen here. So, uh, the part in the movie that gets talked about the most, Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine. I mean, you know, here's a guy, he's convincingly hard as nails, and you wonder, oh, you know, how long, how did it take us this long to discover the guy? But, Hugh Jackman, I mean, he came out of nowhere to just convincingly be Logan, who is tough as nails, and yet you know that you find that heart of gold manifests when it matters most, you know, nobody wanted to see uh, Rogue get deserted as at first she was, you know, Wolverine does that and he has second thoughts, stops, lets her in, gives her a ride and, you know, he doesn't regret uh, being touched both times, you know, in the middle of the movie and the end of the movie in such a way to save Rogue's life. But at the same time, you know, that very first time where we see those claws get manifest, you know, that guy in the bar who uh, you know, tries to push him for, for money and then thinks he can ambush him to, uh, to take him down with a knife. But you know, Wolverine puts him in his place. He got some, uh, has him uh, up against the wall with uh, the, the claws right there to say, you know, you don't want to mess with me. And even before that in the fight itself, I mean, you know, as, you know, their fists coming together and uh, Wolverine's opponent, you know, hand just all of a sudden goes down that way because of how hard that fist is. I mean, you feel the full impact of that and, you know, give credit to Brian Singer, the director, and having the, the right Foley artist to make the noise work. But... You have to love uh, what Hugh Jackman brought to this part as 
somebody who knew how to be intense and somebody who knew how to be tender at all the right moments. So three things. First, I want to thank you for watching this video. Second, I want to invite you to, if you like this video, please click like. If you like this channel, please click subscribe or follow me on Instagram. Also, some self-promotion and you know, a comic book creator. Here's Sledge, part one and part two. It's available through IndiePlanet.com. In the case of Sledge number one, it's available uh, through Amazon Kindle. But uh, the link uh, will be below the description there. So if that intrigues you, please uh, order it. It's available on both digital, the much lower priced option, uh, or it's available uh, physical. Uh, the shipping charges are a little hefty, just, just to avoid any sticker shock there. But that's my uh, shameless plug. Let's get on back to the review. So we have so many names with uh, you know a proven talent in the supporting cast. Anna Paquin, you know, she had already won a, an Oscar by then. Holly Berry hadn't was about to win an Oscar. And you know, Famke Jensen, I love the range that I realized that she had, you know, seeing her so timid and vulnerable uh, in this role as Jean Grey after being the you know, nasty Xenia on the top in the James Bond film, Goldeneye. Uh, James Marsden, you know, we know that he's an awesome actor with all the other stuff that he's been in. Rebecca Romaine shows that she can be more than just a, a supermodel. Tyler Maine, I mean, he's an intimidating presence. They use him well. Ray Park, they use him well. I mean, they had just been a very sinister Darth Maul and as Toad, you know, he's very formidable here. So great, you know, supporting cast, even though we don't uh, get to enjoy them to the full extent of what we know they have talent for, but yes, they, they do a great job for what they're supposed to do. So, yeah, for all its flaws that I've mentioned before, it's a great story. I mean, the message of acceptance is well done here. And, you know, you're not denied action. It, you know, you're, you're totally rooting for the heroes to get it done, and you totally see just how challenged they are by by the villains, you know, those who are going about things the, the wrong way, and, you know, the sympathy isn't lost on them. It, they just don't condone the actions that they're taking and you know uh, older some uh, superhero movies get it does seem that the logic becomes hard to buy into and there's certain things that uh, are hard to buy into here and it might be because of how dated the special effects are but you know it, it's a great story so you know I, I, I this is not you know the highest rating but it, it's worth uh, watching and you know, you kind of get an idea just how important it is that, you know, you, you don't experience hindrances to tell the story that you want to and how much that suffers. But, you know, you learn uh, just what can happen if certain things are left out when it comes to the flaws. So, uh, you know, from a student perspective, you know, watch it know how important development is and use that to uh, you know try to develop characters even further but overall recommend it heartedly not wholeheartedly but i recommend it heartedly <laughs>